Fam, welcome back to another episode of Alpha Commission, where uh, lifelong learners share our knowledge and experience to help each other mutually grow in this uh, field of crypto. Today I have a market update, and uh, it's an interesting one because yesterday we were talking about how it's important to stick to your plan. You stick to the plan. You don't deviate from the plan. That way you have consistency in your trades and you're not going to be distracted by all the fear or the greed that gets into the market. And uh, yesterday we had a lot of it, right? Uh, the Fed came out and uh, made some announcements that they'd like to increase uh, interest rates by an entire percentage. So that's quite a bit um, by summer which means that they're likely to have to increase, you know, by half a percent maybe in March, which is going to be very aggressive. That's not something that they usually do. We usually see maybe a quarter of a basis, you know, a quarter of a percent, but to raise it by half a percent, uh, they're going to be leading. And I think the reason that they're going to do that um, if they choose to go that way is because they want to be able to control it later on. They want to be able to basically uh, pull back a little bit on the amount of uh, interest rates that they're piling on top of the economy in order to slow inflation. And the best way to do that is to just, you know, rip the Band-Aid off, right? So they want to they pump up interest rates uh, a little bit higher than you might expect it to be in the beginning, and just kind of rip off that band-aid and try to let some uh, air come in and get rid of this inflation. If they see that inflation's under the control, then they can start reducing interest rates again. Um, but yeah, they're going to do monetary uh, tightening. And the weird thing is, uh, or the thing that's kind of spooking the market, is that they're doing monetary tightening when uh, real income is actually decreasing. Now, that's something that isn't usually a good combination and can possibly uh, trigger recessions, quite frankly. So it's going to be an interesting experiment. Um, the US government doesn't usually do that. However, we have been having uh, other policies that just don't work that well for the last 20 years or so. And so if they're gonna try something new, I mean, you know, let's hope that it works out. But in the meantime, that can cause a little bit of short-term pain. So what you saw in the markets, uh, the markets were responding to that uh, possibly higher than expected um, interest rate increase. And we're not sure what it's going to be. We'll find out in March, most likely. But uh, yeah, so the, the uh, you know, the... The world of crypto, the world of investing is highly affected by interest rates where interest rates are low, you know, we do well, but when interest rates get high, you know, we do worse. And the reason why is because, of course, if there's higher interest rates, that means there's less uh, free money to borrow at low interest rates out there, which means that there's less money to put into risky assets such as crypto. Now. You might be saying, well, am I against inflation or am I against uh, high, interest, uh, high interest rates? It's a juggling act. There's no easy answer here, right? This is one of those things uh, where you're in between a rock and a hard place where, of course, you don't want inflation to continue forever. So we have to increase interest rates. That's the only way to get inflation down is to increase uh, the interest rates. Um, and that's primarily because most of inflation comes from the uh, reg the uh, regular market. It's it's not like it's just the government printing money, okay? Like that's uh, that's just something that, uh, frankly, uh, let's just say it how it is. Stupid people. Whenever you see those uh, you know memes about the uh, guy like printing money, you know, and there's just like money flying everywhere. 
uh, that's just something that stupid people post because they don't know how it really works. Most of the inflation comes from just uh, regular companies extending loans, uh, which increases the money t uh, the money supply, and that causes inflation. Of course, the federal government does also, you know, uh, use a lot of money that it doesn't really have, and that does contribute to inflation. But primarily, it comes from the economy um, of uh, banks and private corporations lending out money, uh, money that doesn't exist. So it's basically virtual money. It, ex it increases the money uh, monetary supply. That money is worth a little bit less because they're extending loans, so there's more money out there. And by increasing interest rates, you make, you make it harder for them to do that. By increasing interest rates, you make it harder for people to take loans, and you make it harder for people to extend loans. That means that the monetary supply won't just infinitely expand, right? You don't want the money, the, the, the money to just infinitely expand. You want it to contract a little bit when you're having high inflation, and that'll lower inflation. It'll get inflation back to where you want it. So you have to increase interest rates in order for that to happen. But the double-edged sword of that is that it affects how much money people are willing to put into risky assets such as Bitcoin, right? Such as crypto, such as the stock market, right? The tech sector of the stock market. And so as the, these uh, tech sectors and as the uh, crypto market has understood that it may be time to start fighting inflation and it may be time to you know, increase interest rates, there's going to be a pullback in the market. And that's basically what we saw here, right? We didn't go to 100,000. We started talking about interest rates. We started talking about inflation. And then the writing was on the wall. Oh, yeah, we're going to probably increase interest rates. So down we go. Now that's built into the market. We've kind of had a correction. We went back to this uh, sort of baseline. There's a chance that we can get bullish again. And you know, the news yesterday was basically just a little bit, uh, a little bit more aggressive than what the market thought. I think the market pretty much understands that these policy uh, policies are necessary because again, we can't have inflation going on forever. You know, regular people will riot in the streets, right? If the price of bread goes up like 300% or something crazy, right? They can't buy what they need anymore. So you have to control inflation. We have to get this under control. And sometimes just the threat of it allows, uh, you know, the rest of the market to start building it in, in advance, right? The, the rest of the market cools down a little bit. People stop extending loans because they're expecting these type of changes in the market. And so sometimes the market front runs the actual event, which is what happened with, with the crypto. That's why this was such a dramatic uh, decline here. And that front running can sometimes mean that you don't have to be as aggressive later on when the Fed is actually going to act. Maybe it doesn't have to be as aggressive. But yesterday we found out that, oh, lo and behold, inflation was higher than we expected it to be. And so probably we are going to have to be as aggressive as we thought. And additionally, we may need to be even more aggressive up front than what we wanted to be originally. And so that's what the market is responding to today. That's why we're seeing this type of uh, pullback, this little bit of a breakdown here. And people might be thinking, oh, no, we're going to go to hell, you know. Oh, no, Bitcoin's going to zero. But actually, this is just a very healthy pullback. Um, you know, we can turn our FIBs on. I mean, uh, pardon me, our, uh, our EMA is on for the daily. And you can see, look, we're just, you know, we just tagged the uh, 10 here. We didn't really do anything major. Uh, even if we came all the way down here to like a 41,000, it's not the biggest deal in the world, right? We don't want to stay there. This is a good place to be. And if we were able to bounce from here, you know, it's the weekend, right? So there's going to be some shenanigans on the weekend when the uh, professional markets are closed. But these 24-hour, you know, a little bit shadier crypto markets are open. Then, you know, their market makers can, you know, manipulate the market a little bit get a little extra fear, get a little extra greed going, and try to liquidate people. So, you know, on Monday, we'll find out if there's any additional news coming from the Fed, and we're also going to find out um, 
what the professional markets, you know, what the what the smart money is really thinking, and we'll get it sorted out from there. Uh, as for sticking to your plan, you know, uh, the last week I was a little bit bullish as I saw the um, as I saw the grayscale Bitcoin trust breaking out of its breaking out of its downtrend. So the uh, Grayscale Bitcoin Trust hadn't really had a chance to break out of its downtrend in, you know, the entire time. And what we found is that it was just uh, really bearish, really bearish. Well, this wasn't, I don't think this was a fake out. I think that this was a real, um, I think that this was a real breakout and that, uh, you know, the uh, smart money just ended up getting spooked by the Fed news because uh, what happened here was that the uh, is that the the regular spot markets, the uh, 24 hour exchanges, uh, basically all of us combined built confidence into the smart money, right? Confident enough that they were finally ready to break out of their downtrend. And what happened was the Fed came out, gave some unexpected. Uh, even worse news than expected, rather, and that just made the uh, made the smart money come back, retest that downtrend, and they decided, you know what, this could cause a recession. <laughs> what, the, what the Fed is doing could cause a recession, and this might be better than unlimited, um, you know, unlimited inflation, but. A recession isn't good for us, okay? An inflation, uh, a recession isn't good for us. So, what the Fed is doing is a little bit unprecedented. We don't know what it's going to be doing. It has the potential to cause a recession, and we're just gonna, we're just gonna keep in our downtrend here. Wait to see what the Fed comes out with next. Maybe just kind of uh, play it safe until perhaps March, right? when uh, the interest rates are really declared and then we can see uh you know and then we can take it from there so this smart money is being very conservative and you know so again uh just just to be careful uh in, in my last uh, episode i did point out that it is important to be watching the news and it is important to be sticking to your plan my plan was to sell up here you can see this red bar uh, I gave you kind of my cheat sheet. And then if we re-enter this zone, then I plan to DCA back in. Because I'm bullish on Bitcoin, I'm bullish on crypto. I don't think that uh, we're going to just crash right now. I think that potentially we can get up into these areas. But I'm not going to be uh, betting on it, you know. Uh, because of this development in the Fed, I may want to turn just a little, little bit more negative, just a little bit more negative, and I'm actually going to probably DCA out of my positions that I'm DCAing into right here if we get back up into this area. And I may start that sooner than I thought, maybe around 48,500 to potentially be ready to be exiting by 49,000. And if we can get past that, then I can re-enter, you know, once we have some type of bullish confirmation above here. But I'd rather just trade this area. This is my plan, make your own plan. Uh, I'm not your financial advisor. Uh, I'm not an expert at uh, any of this stuff. So I'm learning along with you guys, and I'm just sharing what we're learning over at Alpha Commission. And hopefully uh, together we can, you know, make uh, plans that work for each of us individually. But this is my plan, and if we end up dumping further, I'm going to buy more here. If we end up going down lower, I'm just going to keep buying because I believe in this asset. And um, if you've seen previous episodes of Alpha Commission, then you do know that uh, I do have a case in mind where we could fall to 25,000, maybe even 20,000. 
highly unlikely to get below those numbers, but this is crypto, so anything can happen. And um, but this is the range that I'm playing right now. So you know, you do what you want. Uh, this is what I'm sticking to. And so I did de-risk when we were in this area, and I'm even though I was bullish, even though I was very bullish at this point. I did de-risk, and I'm glad that I did, because now I have a chance to buy lower, and I stuck to my plan. Well, let's see. Other than the uh, monetary uh, tightening uh, by the Fed, you know, there is additional news that um, Binance, Binance actually bought $200 uh, million worth of Forbes, which is a news company, and so... This is interesting because perhaps in the future we can start seeing more bullish uh, news about crypto and that might be good for us in the long term. So some people are calling it a conflict of interest, but uh, hey, you know, <laughs> crypto is here to stay. So we might as well start moving past the, uh, you know, the old kind of uh, boomer conversations about crypto being for black markets and for you know, weird stuff and get into understanding the nuance of the new technology that uh, the blockchain offers, blockchain technologies offer, and, you know, how it can be transformative for the future. Um, the banks are going to hate it, but, uh, you know, it's, it's here to stay, right? The metaverse is here to stay. DeFi is here to stay. They may try to do whatever they can do to, you know, limit stable coins and, you know, banking alternatives, but it's here to stay. So that's just my brief update. Uh, I'm not really going to try to guess what the market is going to do because, uh, first of all, you know, that would be unethical. I just, you know, look, we have two, we have two directions here. Just uh, if we get below, uh, you know, that $41,000 area, you know, if we get below... 40,500. I'm going to be very wary, right? I'm probably going to get out of my position. Uh, even if I bought here, I probably will get out because we might test the bottom of this. And on the other hand, um, you know, which I think is probably more likely if we have just neutral news or uh, positive news, is that we're going to test the top here to maybe, you know, maybe up to 49,000. And if for some reason there's really super bullish news, then maybe we can be talking about these, you know, 50 to 55,000 region. But uh, I'm, I'm not seeing that happening right now. I'm seeing more of a pullback, testing the top of this range. Maybe another pullback. I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure yet. Maybe we'll just skyrocket if the news is good, right? But our fractals are starting to break down. So, you know, we can't just count on, you know, moving the same way that we have before. Um, we are entering a new era of Bitcoin. And you can see on the daily, we... Let me see if I can clear some of this stuff. On the daily, we didn't break through the, the 200, right? We didn't break through the 200. And so we're having this type of situation where there's the potential that we can get sent all the way back down. If the new, if news is bearish enough, potentially we could do like a double bottom or even dip a little bit further. Just uh, let's play it by ear. On the other hand, look at where we are over here, right? So now we're above, you know, we're above the 10 and uh, the, and the 20. Right? And so when was the last time that we were above the 10 and the 20 on the daily? Well, that was right here. And this looks very similar, very similar to this breakout. So even if we don't, you know, even if we're being rejected by the, uh, no, really the 89, but if we're being rejected by the 89 and the 200, in fact, in fact, we do seem to be even you know, live on, you know, on we do seem to be recovering the 50 after this dip. And just like here, maybe we're going to do a nice bounce. Maybe we're going to do a nice bounce. Maybe a nice, maybe a nice bounce, right? 
somewhere in here. Not saying we're going to break through that, but maybe maybe a nice bounce. So let's think both ways. Let's not be a perma bear. Let's not be a perma bull. Let's just be traders and keep our trading hat on. And if you want to invest, you know, well, this was a good time to do it. But, uh, you know, on these pullbacks is a good, good point to DCA in. And I'm not sure... I'm not sure that we're going to dip as low as people would like us to dip. Um, but uh, then again, I am a little bit more bullish. And uh, we do have to see how the smart money reacts to the situation. So I'm going to sign off from here. Uh, that was your alpha for the day. And, uh, you know, happy trading.